Okay, um, good morning, everyone. Can you guys hear me um, loud and clear? Good. Um, as um, this is Smith, and this is my colleague here, Omar. Hey, guys. So today we'll be talking to you guys about um, how, I'm assuming you guys already learned through the last two days um, how to build an app on the business application platform, like how to build the Power Apps or to build an extension for our operations and finance um, set of applications. And today, really, the focus is a very short time period that we have. It's more about how to package that up and publish it to the marketplace, which is AppSource. So um, to give some context, so what's in it for you guys? So obviously, um, in AppSource, like about a year ago, we actually collapsed the office.com um, store. So we have over 120 million active business users going to Microsoft App Source to basically identify and find business applications. So as a publisher or a partner or a customer, so this is actually a pretty um, active marketplace. So there's a lot of eyeballs going for your apps. Um, what we've done, we also provide a solution certification service, which is a free offering that Microsoft provides as a publisher or an app developer to provide you guidance and make sure that your apps can be upgrade, upgrade properly and meet Microsoft guidelines and, and, and patterns, best practices. The third benefit of that, we also provide um, go-to-market um, services to help you um, get the marketing messaging, um, come up with a plan of how to actually go um, identify more and increase the scope of the, the customer base of your applications. And third, um, we obviously, as part of being a partner, so you get some benefits as part of you know, the Microsoft Partner Network, so you get some base services and, and that we provide as part of new competencies. Um, some quick stats on AppSource. So AppSource has been around for about a year and a half, close to two now. So we have over 3,600 um, business applications. That are, this is all um, Power Apps, basically business applications without the specific Azure apps and Office apps. This is just for the dynamic set of applications. We have over 250 consulting services. Consulting services are a set of um, partners that basically offer a um, specific service to help you know, other partners on board or build or customers. And then we have our ecosystem of ISVs is growing pretty fast. So we have close to 2,000 um, ISVs, and the list is growing. So without further ado, I, wanted to, I want to go over to a kind of real live example of how to take an app. And I, like I said, I'm making the assumption that you guys, let me ask, actually, how many of you guys have heard of AppSource before? Good. Do you guys have any apps published in AppSource? One, two, okay. So, okay, a few of them. Okay, so about two or three percent of the audience here. So, okay, so um, I will try to, it's a level 100 course, but I'll try to get more context on where we are. So, um, obviously, this is about publishing an app. So, the assumption that I made here, and we can talk offline, folks who haven't build an app on Power Apps before. So you basically go to the Maker Portal. That's where you start. You get an instance, and then you start on the Maker Portal by creating, connecting to your data or designing your data model, right? You can basically go to your apps, your data, business logic, and all that. So that's where you start. And then what I did, using the Maker Portal, I built a very simple app, which basically has one um, extension to the account entity um, for my default instance, and I added a business process that basically defined different stages. So my app is called ISV Engagements, and I created a very business process with four stages and a few attributes. Very simple app. So now my app is built. I need to um, have a way to package that app where I can go and send it to Microsoft for certifications. So what does that process look like? Um, oops. Just to, give, just to give you guys a heads up, so there's two basically um, 
uh, publishing routes right now. One is for Smith is going to go over the one for um, uh, Dynamics 365, the uh, customer, CR, customer yeah. engagement piece, and then we'll go through what that looks like for finance and ops yep. in just a bit. So what I've done here, so I'm not going to go into much detail. So what I've done here, so we have this um, um, utility called Package Deployer. So what I grabbed, the solutions that I had that had my customization on the app in the instance, I, oops. So I exported that solution, which has all my customization and metadata. We're using Package Deployer. This is my app right here. I basically create a package. So that gives me the, the structure of the package that I need to submit to Microsoft for certification. So I'm going to skip some of that. And like I said, I'll be offline. You guys can ask questions. I can provide more contact setup. So now this is my app. So what we've done, like I said, I exported the solution. This is my solution. I exported that to package deployer. I create a package that has the right structure and artifacts that I need to submit to the certification process. Um, one of the things that we've done as part of the certification team at Microsoft, we actually created a service that we're going to open pretty soon, within a week, to our publishers, where you actually can submit, as part of your dev process, get the same analysis that we usually provide to you, you know, after you submit the, the request. So this is an example of, that, of the service. So as you can see, I've been kind of validating some of my early packages in that. So what we can see here, if I pick some of the details, so that gives me a quick summary of the last package that I ran. And it's given me a categorization of the different you know, issues. I can click on the details view here. And that gives you exactly, basically, where in your code and the method and whatever, and the guidance also associated with that. Now, what is nice about this, um, this is basically kind of the high-level categorizations of the things that we, Microsoft, look for in your applications. So we look at um, usage. Basically, how you are um, the, the patterns of uh, how to access some of our APIs, um, design, performance. So some of the um, customization that you make in your app, what will be the performance impact? So we have a set of rules that we have in that service that go and look against your code to identify those. So it's kind of high level. I don't need to go to every single one of them. This is a public site, so you guys can reference that. But those are kind of the high level categories that we, the things that we check for in your applications. And then to make it even easier, we provide the service now. We expose that to all our publishers. We'll make that announcement next week. We'll send an announcement to all our publishers where you'll be able to in integrate the pre-certification service as part of your DevOps process. So now, your app is ready. You, you, you're basically using the pre-cert service. Um, my last you know, um, analysis on the package I have no warnings, no errors, so I feel good. So I'm going to go to the publisher portal to publish my app to Microsoft, to, to the app source. So the, the publisher portal, it's, you go to cloudpartner.azure.com. Um, for, the, for the folks who haven't seen that before, so there's a concept of an offer. So as a publisher, once you get access, you become um, a publisher in app source. So you, are, you get access to a portal. And that within that portal, you can create offers. So every app that you have in AppSource is an offer. And we have different offer tabs based on the type of the apps. So in this case, because it's a model-driven apps, a power apps, so I come here, so I created my offer ID, provided some metadata. We have some technical information here, some metadata that we collect in terms of which category that you want the app to show under um, the blob URL where you have the package uploaded so Microsoft can access that to do the analysis on it. Um, the different regions where you want users to be able to download and install the app because we are deployed our service globally. Um, and some marketing artifacts. So we also have the concept of a test drive. So as a publisher, you might not uh, you might want to provide a curated experience to potential users of your app. So instead of having them deploy that on their own instance, you have a pre-configured instance with a guided tool of your app. So we offer that capability in App Store. So you can define the hero scenarios that you want to highlight for your end users. Um, 
on the storefront. So the storefront side, it's really more marketing. So usually partners have the marketing team working on the storefront to provide the content, the richness of explaining what the app does and the videos and stuff like that. So this is where the marketing folks will log in and provide all that um, kind of richness of metadata and stuff like that. Um, description of the app, terms of conditions, and all the artifacts and stuff like that. And then we we'll ask you for, to provide engineering contact and support contact. Now, once you do that, you click Publish. And then we basically walk you through a set of steps or stages. So what you're looking at now, obviously, in this case, I already submitted my app. So there's a pre-validation step that happened. Since you already went through the pre-certification, so that process, if you look at it now, we say it can take up to um, and the certifi certified package, that can take up to 15 days. So what we are trying to do is to reduce that time. So if you go to the pre-cert, you already fixed most of the issues. So when we looked at it, it should be a quick delta. So the certification process hopefully will go much faster. So that's one thing that we're trying to do to speed up and increase and decrease the duration of certifications for our partners. So you go to all the steps. And eventually, you get to preview the applications. Before you go live, you as a publisher, you get a preview URL, which is basically a hidden um, um, link with um, a code in it that you can share with specific folks to see how the app looks like. So in my case, I already have that set up. So I can go, I can go to App Source and then look up for my, put the link for the, my, my app. This is a private link. And this is the app that I just built that you guys saw earlier in the instance with a very basic custom um, entity with a business process on top of that. So now I can basically review the app. I can tr try it, deploy it on, on an org. If I click to try that, what's going to happen, which is one of the things I mentioned earlier, we provide a lot of leads to our partners. So whenever someone click on the app to try it, so we generate leads. We grab some metadata and send it to you so you can follow up with that potential customer. Awesome. Ready, Smith? Um, and then, obviously, this is kind of a nutshell. So I talk about how you can package your app. You can take advantage of the pre-certification service that we're going to launch soon. So folks who are partners or ISVs, this is a great tool that you should take advantage of. Or to make the announcement, please join the program so you can participate in that. Awesome. Um, we talk about kind of some of the basic of the publisher portal. And if you guys have questions on that, I can talk more about it. And then the rest now, your app is ready to basically expose to the over 120 million active commercial users that we have to start um, trying your apps. Awesome. So that's all we had for the model-driven applications. Awesome. Thanks, uh, thanks, Smith. So in the interest of time, I'm just going to you know, try to um, cover uh, as much ground as possible. So this is LCS, and the project you guys would want to create is the Migrate and Create project. And when you guys create this project, this will give you your, um, the ability to deploy environments, set up your VSTS, and basically build the artifacts that I mentioned uh, in the previous slide. And so it essentially takes you into, um, into this workspace. And from here, you have the ability to monitor your environments, um, bundle your, your task guides and your BPMs. You have all the ability to basically build all those assets. And what I really am going to take you guys through is you guys have already bun uh, created these assets, and now you guys want to go through the process of publishing them for, uh, for, for Dynamics Finance and Ops. So here in the asset library, as you guys are building these assets, uh, your assets will show up in the asset library. And in this project, you'll basically be able to go through and version them and upgrade them and, and maintain them. And then you'll also have a workspace uh, called Solution Package. And this is where really you're going to essentially bundle all of those artifacts together. So if we come here and we look at uh, Solution Management, this is where you guys are going to come and, and actually create your app. So what I have here is, um, is an app that I'm creating that's called a Advanced Regression Testing Tool that's within the UI of Dynamics. So we would go through the process of naming the app, um, highlighting which methodology we created for the app, what product uh, version it's for, and then what industry it's for. 
once we create it, we basically enter into this workspace. And this is really, um, you know, the kind of the, the, the solutioning of it is very important because you're also going to come here when you want to maintain the application lifecycle of these apps. So um, you're going to distribute these apps to different customers, and then you're going to want to also update them, provide hotfixes, et cetera, and then you're going to basically use this solution package um, experience to basically provide that to all of your customers. So here we have a lot of the, um, we have the content we just entered in, and you have a series of artifacts that we discussed from your model files to your deployable package, your database backup. If you have any Power BI embedded um, files, you can add that here. Your BPM content, your process data package, and your um, any license agreements you might have that go along with this app. So there is a lot more detail here regarding each one of these artifacts. But essentially, um, the way that we allowed partners in finance and ops to control their IP is by the solution approvers. So within your organization, you would actually add the people who are allowed to share your IP across different partners. So once a customer has purchased LCS licenses, they would then add one of the, pe uh, one of the person from your organization that has the rights to, um, to bring in all of these assets into that customer project. So this is where the solution approver becomes really important. So if you're a partner, you want to have your five or six people who are approved to share this IP. If a customer purchases your, your, um, your app, then basically they would add one of these five people. And then once that person is added to that customer project, he would import the solution package. Okay. So once you've brought all of your, your content and bundled the solution package, you would essentially go through the process of publishing this. And once you, you can either publish this within your organization um, or you can publish this globally. So we'll just say we'll publish it within our organization. And what you'll see will happen is that there's a solution identifier that will be created. And once that solution identifier, uh, identifier is created, that's the that key that links this solution package to what Smith just showed you guys in the app, um, uh, app source portal. So we're just going to go to the app source portal really quickly. And here I have an offer. And I would take the solution identifier that was created here, this GUI and I would bring it into this publisher ID. And this is what um, creates the link between the two and will basically um, allow us to know which um, or validate that app uh, along the certification process. So one more thing, um, you know, basically this is every time you edit and publish, it's going to reversion it and your customers will be able to open up um, or import the latest version. So if you have 10 customers that have um, your solution package, you would basically update your solution package here and republish, and all the people who have access to it would be able to then just import it um, pretty seamlessly. So uh, at this point, I think that um, you know any additional questions, you guys, um, there we do, yeah, we'll take it offline, but we do have a lot of content on our docs. And we'll also be here to take any, any questions, so um, feel free to come and talk to us.